Good afternoon guys and welcome back to another video here from the Offgrid Garage in sunny Hot Australia. It is already late afternoon so we're still making around four and a half kilowatt and we've got like 30 amps outside which is probably the same as the temperature. So in today's video we want to upgrade the QSO battery here with an active balancer one of these capacitive balancers four amps five amps four amps five five amps I think they have after you may have seen my last video where we tried to manually balance the battery pack here using the light bulbs to discharge your higher voltage cells and using the power supply to recharge the lower voltage cells we had some kind of success but it took me like two and a half three hours to actually get some results and this is certainly not the way to do it so hence the hence the idea to put in one of these active balancers and this battery box is perfect for that because look at all this top space here we have and I have already taken off one of these duct lids here to see how much space I have inside these rails plenty of space for, for additional balance cables and everything but um, yeah well these cables coming with a the balancer they are fairly short actually even if we put the balancer here in the top the cables would not be long enough to reach the bottom cells here and I came up with two alternatives for that so either we mount the capacitor somewhere here in the middle maybe using some of this um, clear plastic and put this underneath as an isolator and then put the balancer on top of it and then we can feed the cables back into the rail and then they would be long enough to reach all the cells and the balancer would just sit here in the middle it's not a bad idea actually it's pretty good looks good and we've got plenty of space here as well as you can see from from this angle here lots of space so easy to mount in between the batteries here or alternatively uh, we leave the balancer up here in the top sitting so something like this and then we splice the balancer cables here to the existing balance cables which goes to the cells because they're all running past here anyway so why not connect them together up here somewhere and have this like this and the other side over here to the second to the second bunch of cables on this side here and I've already tried one cable so you can easily cut this braided insulation and then you've got access to the core you can solder the cable on put some heat shrink over it and it's done and I also I also want to add this little switch here to the BMS so we can turn the BMS on and off manually because as we know from previous a lot of previous testing with these active balancers you should not leave them connected all the time they actually unbalance your pack if it's not fully charged so only turn on these balancers like you would do with the other balancers of your BMS as well and yes they can run in parallel with the balancer on your BMS no problem at all and we've got this um, control panel here anyway from the BMS so maybe I put the switch somewhere over here and have this labeled as balancer on off or so but then I had a look inside and saw that the BMS actually takes up the all the space of this um, of this control panel area so to do that to put the switch in we need to take out but um, let's mount the balancer first and then we think again about the switch uh, so I've already I've already cut one of the wires here this is our ne most negative the B minus cable so we just take off a bit of the insulation of the cable same over here Okay, and then I've got some heat shrink and there we go first cable done that's our most negative okay second one done well <laughs> I guess this will take me a while I made a bit of a short with one of the balance cables here came off and bend it over and then I tried to push it away and I pushed it on the other terminal here and there's another burn mark that looks shit um, so now the uh, the first plug is connected so I want to quickly check what we have done so far 
hertz. This doesn't work. So 3.5, 7, 10.5, 14, 17.5, 21, 24. Yeah, of course, and then the battery of the camera was empty. So the last one is then 28.1. So all perfect. That's nice. Okay, I'll um I'll do the second. Come on. I'll do the second side here as well. And then we get this all nice organized somehow back here in the duct and make this all look nice again. It looks like shit at the moment, eh? I hate it. Oh, were you just expecting another time lapse because the music started? Well, sorry to disappoint you. I'm already done. 3.5, 7, 10, 14, 17, 21 and 24. Perfect. I haven't got an isolator where I put this balancer on big bubble wrap off cut. It's a great temporary solution. Second one on. All right. I think it is all working fine. We've got a orange light. Balancer is working at the moment. Let's have a look at the software. Address zero. Ah. Well, we haven't connected the door with the switch. The BMS is not turned on. Display and switch. There we go. I hope there's no further explosion or something. Ah, connect straight away. There we go. All right. So at the moment we have um, 58 millivolt deviation. So let's give this half an hour. I'll have a spat with my wife and that sounds well. And then I'm coming back and we have a look what the deviation actually does. <sighs> okay, I'm also fully charging the battery to 57.5 or something. And deviation is rising at the moment because the voltage is rising. So the cells are drifting again, but let's give it um, half an hour and then we see again. So I pushed up the voltage to 57.8 volts. Uh, cell number three is still our lowest one. And 16 is the highest. So let's see here. Cell number three is the yellow cable. What can we measure? 260 milliamps into cell number three. So it gets actually recharged. And cell number 16 is our highest. That's the red cable. It's just stupid. And we are discharging with 110 milliamps. We are still charging with 180 into the whole pack. And deviation is down to 50 millivolt now. Okay, let's give it half an hour and then we see. I know I said this before, but I'm always looking here and there's always something interesting happening. Okay, it is now 40 minutes since we connected the active balancer. And wow, deviation is down, what can I say, to 13, 12 millivolt only. These balancers are just amazing. They work. They just work. And this is at almost 58 volts. So this is 3.6 something volts. But cell number three is still our lowest voltage cell. And 16 is the highest. But if you keep them connected until tomorrow morning or something, they will balance out completely. But with this result now, I would consider this battery as fully top balanced. Pretty good result, right? So, and now in the second step, we want to install the switch to turn on and turn off our active balancer up here. And, um, well, we have to somehow disable our battery first for safety reasons, of course. And um, let's do a bit of a risk analysis here. So we've got the positive down there and the negative is far in the box, so unreachable. So we cannot actually disconnect the cables there. Positive would be possible, but I want to disconnect both. And um, we can also take off this link here to have the possibility, if one of your cable slips, that it actually makes a short as I did yesterday with the balance cables here. But in this case, I would say the negative cable is already halfway out. It's connected here to the BMS with two screws and goes up here and both cables are connected to a ring lug connected here to the main negative of the battery. And as you have seen at the beginning, uh, you can use such cardboard or any type of insulation material. It protects all your terminals of the battery. So in case something happens, this is all protected and isolated now. A bit more protection 
this is just a good reminder. So and again we want to turn off our BMS first, unplug the communication cable, unplug the display and also the power switch. So. So and before we use any tools here on these screws here I have um, fully covered now the other side of the battery because over just over there is the main positive and you don't want to make a short between these two terminals at all. Never never ever and there's no fuse in between nothing this would be well in this case actually I would really recommend taking out this link here and disabling these two strings of batteries. Okay, I've now removed both bolts here and we can take out this link. Oh yeah, it is a flexible bus bar, really it is. And now we can safely work on the main negative up here. So we can now take off the negative of our BMS and immediately we take some tape and isolate the ring lock. So it's not getting in contact with anything. Just to be twice as safe. And here again, before loosening these bolts here, I am covering all the other bus bars, so I'm not getting in contact with anything while working, especially if you have unisolated tools like I have here. You slip and then you touch one of the other terminals down here and you've got a short already across three or four cells. Cover it up, piece of cardboard, a rag, some sticky tape and you're safe. So in the next step we have to disconnect the balance cables as well because we still got 48 volt on the BMS now. All the balance cables are connected still to the battery, to the cells and we don't want to risk anything here. Okay, all the balance cables are off and now we should be good to um, take out the BMS. Wow, what are these cables for there? Okay, we will see in a minute. So now here from the outside we need to take off all these screws here around the control panel and then we should be able to slide out the whole metal including the BMS to the side. They should now slide out. Here, you want to know what this one is here at the bottom? <laughs> It's not a float switch to turn on the bilge pump or something. It is actually a Bluetooth module. Yes, this BMS has actually Bluetooth. It is not advertised anywhere, but I've seen it flashing blue in the dark. And I asked QSO and they have sent me um, the app already to um, connect to the BMS via Bluetooth. So pretty cool. And they also told me they have Wi-Fi capability of the BMS. So the BMS can actually connect to your Wi-Fi and they have remote access if you allow it through the app. So they can remote into the BMS and see and help the customer if there are any problems. So, um, well, I, we never had such features at all with the BMS. Okay, so here can, we can see the BMS for the first time. The actual communication board is separately and this is where all these cables are going to Unlike the Zeppelos BMS where this is all integrated in one PCB, it is separate here. Okay, then we need to take off these um, few screws here and take the BMS off and then we can drill our holes. Well, we can actually drill the holes up here now. Yeah, I think this is okay too. Then we don't need to unscrew the BMS actually. Oh, oh, oh this is pushing it. Well, it's a seven millimeter spanner, which actually fits this tiny nut. Okay, very, very slow. Okay, that's probably enough. Oh boy. This is my worst soldering ever. What's going on here? 
I think I've got a bit too much. Der ganze Schalter im Arsch. Na super. Yeah guys, just when I was finished isolating the cables here, the whole switch broke down and two pieces. I have replaced it already with another one. It's probably good it happened right now and not later. So that was now my first, my third attempt to install this little switch because the second one I didn't have any nuts for it and this is a, like a special metric thread and no nuts in my box. So I had to use yet another switch and it's all soldered. Let's put this BMS back in and <laughs> forget about it. Look at all this dust here. Yeah, this Bluetooth module seems a bit lost here, right? I mean... I'm uh, putting in our bridge again now to reconnect our two battery strings. Okay, negative connected, link connected. Let's plug in all the balance cables. And the positive stays all the way behind there. Okay, I just want to measure if there's any voltage difference between the main positive of the battery and the positive of the BMS, 44 volts. Okay, I may use a pre-charge resistor here too before I reconnect this one. <laughs> Not sure if we get a spark because there are capacitors on the BMS. Okay, there's nothing. Okay, I've shrouded everything off here to tighten the main positive. Because we don't want to cause any drama here. So we can now take off all our barriers. So, and in the last step, we need to connect these two cables now to our active balancer. This was the main task actually, right? I'll leave the cable as long as it is. Who knows what we are doing with this case here in the future. And we may be thankful for having such a long cable connected. Alrighty. So what you want to do is, as commonly known, there is this um, solder here where it says run and there are two contacts underneath which are bridged with a solder. And we have to remove this one and have to solder these two contacts onto our two cables. And then when we close the switch, it actually closes the contacts and start the balancer. All right. So I've removed them. Now you can see the two pads. See, they are single pads. Guys, you won't believe it. <laughs> uh, I put everything in, turned it on, didn't work. Turned it off, didn't work. <laughs> uh, this stupid switch doesn't work. I cannot put the switch in the other position and still nothing. <laughs> the switch is not working. <laughs> Oh, I'm sitting here for hours in the garage and doing all this shit here and now this <laughs> this switch is not working. <laughs> not that funny actually. Okay, 
I guess, um, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. I'm calling it a night. <laughs> I'm, I'm calibrating another spat now. <laughs> I'm not doing any other shit anymore here. I'm just, this is just, we leave it as it is. You know what to do. In in principle, it works like this. So you connect your switch, which you should test before you put it in actually. Connect it to the two run pads. And then when you close the switch, it actually um, turns on your balancer then. <laughs> but, um, well, <laughs> oh God, I can't believe that. <laughs> Okay, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here on the channel. Who says you cannot have do-it-yourself fun with a pre-assembled battery pack, right? I mean, come on, that was a lot of fun, right? Ah, before I let you go, there's one more thing. I've got a 125 amp breaker, DC breaker here, which I would potentially like to put into this case here. It is a bit of work to putting this one in because there's not much room if you have seen. But I found a spot and it is possible. We can do either this here, a double pole DC breaker, where we connect positive and negative and then can fully isolate the battery. Or alternatively, or here, alternatively, we um, take off this bridge and replace it with a 200 amp, that would be an easy task. I just need to extend this one hole a bit and then it would already fit. Now, because of the height from the plate to the bottom of the plastic here, we would need to put some copper washers or something underneath to make this actually work. So it's not as simple as replacing the bridge with the fuse. There's a bit of work involved in this as well, but um, both of these options would be nice little do-it-yourself projects. I really want to have some kind of protection here in this battery, either a fuse or a breaker. This is insane that QSO builds a battery without any protection inside. Okay, leave a um, comment down below what you want me to do, either the breaker or the fuse. And um, I may follow your recommendation then. <laughs> okay, guys, until the next video, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> I, I can't believe this switch is not working. I mean, really? Okay, before I let you go, go. Um, is anyone here in Australia with a 3D printer who can print me a tray, a holder, half of a case for this balancer? Like just a plate with four standoffs in the corner so it doesn't sit on the bubble wrap forever? Just maybe a bit of the ground and with a plastic plate so it isolates against the metal case of the battery. I'm totally happy to pay for the material and shipping as well and uh, I probably uh, mention your name as well in the video. So if anyone wants to help out and get in contact with me, please, um, thanks. Ah, man. Verdammte erbärmliche Dreckscheiße, ey. Ich kann's nicht glauben. Wieso habe ich denn einen kaputten Schalter in meiner Kiste? Das gibt's doch nicht. Das kann doch nicht sein. Nee, nee. <lacht> Ich rieche mich auf, wenn der geht. Sag ich, der geht. Her, her, her. On, off. On, off. On, 